too much in here because I typically bring people up here in the daylight. And most of the stuff that goes on is more like at night, more usually. Right. My son came up here though, and he's very sensitive, and he was walking around in here, and he was going like this with his hands, and I'm like, Brian, what's up? I said, What are you doing, dude? And I said, You know, what, what's going on? He's like, and He's walking like just right into here, and he's like, Oh, like, this is like there's mud in my veins, and I said, yeah. What? He said, Yeah. He said that. I'm, he said that's the only way I can explain it. But now, who do you think it is? Well, I do not believe the stories about the hanging or the mm -hmm. jumping. Okay. I don't believe yeah, those at all. Those aren't true. Those aren't true. The research right. I did did not turn up any last names. Of course, when it comes to the Catholics, mm -hmm. they're very good at covering things up. They are. So if yeah. that actually happened, they wouldn't want that out anyway. But I do mm -hmm. think that the story about the bartender is awfully compelling. The fact that that's a story at all, mm -hmm. why would that be? Yeah. About both, concerning both those two stories. But the stories I'm more intrigued with, personally, are the ones about the family itself. Charles mm -hmm. Eisenbeis's own son took his life, shot himself in the head in the bakery, in the basement of the bakery when he found out the railroad was going to Seattle instead of coming here. Wow. It bankrupt half the town. It bankrupt, I mean, do you know about the motel that burned to the ground? No. Rooms. There was a 100, there's a picture of it downstairs. I'll show you by the front desk. There's a, and it's like a negative that is what we have. You're looking at it backwards. But there's a great big 120 room hotel that he had built. The only building he ever had built in wood because he had the brickworks factory. And when the railroad didn't come here, that mysteriously burnt to the ground. It was built so that people who were going to come here and set up homesteads or relocate or, you know, mm -hmm. see if they liked the area would have a place to stay. And they, they did end up using it for a sanitarium for a number of years. In fact, I believe sanitarium. one of his daughters was there with tuberculosis or some wow. very grave illness. Yeah. So the other thing, the other story that I just love is, and, and there may be some hauntings or some, there may be a lot more relegated to who um, is the little girl that was... Mm -hmm. Her name was Lotta. Do you know about her? Lotta, I don't. Okay, she's amazing. She is evidently, they, well, they can't tell. They haven't mm -hmm. never flushed it all out yeah, as to whether absolutely. it's Charles Eisenbeis's daughter by his mistress or his granddaughter because he claimed her as his granddaughter. And she lived here supposedly in this end of the castle because this is the old building and mm -hmm. the Jesuits hadn't purchased it yet, so there was nothing else. And they, um, they said that when the uh, people at the graveyard had to do some some cleaning around the graveyard site, they saw that his mausoleum was starting to tip into the, you know, sink into the ground because there's wow. a lot of what It's really wet up there and it's yeah, really heavy. Yeah, yeah. Great big huge obelisk thing is up there. So they went down and did some investigating and there was a child's coffin on top of Charles. That's right outside there? Where No, there's no graveyard right here on the property. Okay. But there is, it's Laurel Park or Laurel, Laurel Park. something. Laurel Graveyard. Is it it's open? In Port Townsend. In... Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You guys can find it easy. Okay, cool. I haven't been there yet. I want to go. I yeah, really we'll do. Have to... Lots of family members are buried there. He's buried with his first wife, which mm -hmm. I find unusual but interesting. His second wife was the one that he built this for, and she remarried and left. So when he was buried, he was buried with his first wife. Wow. So and so you were saying cool. there was a child? There was a child. There was a little girl that he just dearly loved. I mean, he had eight kids. So for some reason, oh, wow. this one child was very special to him and from mm -hmm. you know the stories that I've read and she was 12 she evidently had some kind of either heart uh, failure or heart or like a small heart I think they said hmm. but she died when she was 12 and she never went to school she lived here all her life oh wow from what I've been able to research and did not do anything but she was here all the time until she passed Jeez. so How old was she when she passed 12 12 yeah okay so look up, Lada, look up Lada and see what you come up Lada. with because there's some really interesting stuff there. Hmm. And then the, the son who was his father's partner, they were partners in the bakery and partners in the brickworks and they were, you know. Wow. So he took his own life. A lot of people, there were a Jeez. lot. Well, this town went from being what would have been the Seattle and the Pacific Northwest to being a pretty body raunchy little town. For yeah, it seems like a ghost town now. Well, and do you know about the Shanghai Tunnels? I do. Yeah. I know all about the Shanghai Tunnels in Oregon. Okay. I've been through the Oregon Tunnels and oh, stuff wow. and I've, I've ghost hunted through Amazing stuff. They're, they're really eerie. Really amazing stuff. Really unique. Mm -hmm. Not every little town has that. <laughs> <laughs> he's the owner. He's actually the owner of Spooked in Seattle. So he does underground oh. ghost tours and stuff. Nice. So that's awesome. I'm a I'm a huge fan of his. So he's he's kind of <laughs> mentoring me. Right. So yeah. That's awesome. that's yeah. Awesome. When I investigated this place, I brought my group out here. A ghost. Mm -hmm. There's lots of media.